Hey YouTube, so it's Thursday morning, the temperature's around 32 degrees, and we got three inches of snow last night, so I need to go and plow this. Um, this is the third time I've plowed this week now, so we're getting some good winter weather, but it's not really that bad because it's sort of warm. This is the three more inches that we got, and uh, it's kind of wet snow, it's a little heavy, but it's supposed to get really cold tonight, so I'm trying to clean up as best I can, because everything's going to turn to either ice or just frozen lumps, which is hard to drive on. So I haven't seen my buddy in a couple of weeks, or I'll, actually he was here once this week, but other than that he hasn't been out driving much. But I'm going to still plow this for him so that uh, if it gets as cold as they say it's going to get, at least he's not in ice and frozen lumps trying to get up there. Well, you can see there's nothing but ice under this yet. So this is going to be miserable for, if it gets really cold, which it's supposed to, it's going to be miserable for a week or so at least until it warms up a little bit to get rid of this ice. Okay guys, so now today I'm going to be cutting the square holes in here. Now here's the key, alright? See what you're seeing here? Okay, so here's the key, and this mark is the end of this. So we have to be resting on this, like this, Okay, with the, with the key. So, I measured back in there a little bit. And then you want to turn this key on a little bit of an angle because from the points when it turns, that's how big you actually need this thing. So, we're about that size. So, yeah, we figure that. And then from the top, from the bottom of the top, so in other words, you have to pull away a little bit from here, which is probably about right there. Okay, and then do the same thing on an angle from there, from this corner to the opposite uh, diagonal corner. Okay, and that's basically where that square has to be. Now, um, the thing here is, is that you need to have, you need to have the um, the uh, key be able to turn all the way around here. So um, you could cut a round hole, but the problem with a round hole is you still need it to be flat up at the top. So a round hole, in other words, what I'm trying to say to you is, if you cut, or if you drill the round hole in here, let's say something like this. Okay, these corners have to come out of there for it to lay down. So I just do a square hole and get it over with. So I'm going to mark both sides of this. And then uh, I'll show you how I'm going to cut it. See, so this, what has to happen here with this thing is, this has to lay flat like this, and it has to be able to turn and be straight up like that, okay? So whatever's in the way as far as the side, you have to make sure you're big enough that this thing can twist all the way around in a circle on there. So this is how you mark it. All right, and it's very close to the top. You don't cut through the top. You stay below the top metal. And now I'll show you how I do that on the uh, the milling machine. Okay, so here's what I do to make this work as easy as I can. You need something in here to keep this rigid because when you put it into the vise, the only place it's being held is the top and the bottom. So any kind of drilling may make this bend back or forth. You know, you're pushing down on it so it's going to make it bend in. So this wooden block in here stops that stuff from happening. So. 
I put this down and then tighten up on that a little bit so that it's good and snug. And then what I want to do here is line up the um, bit to roughly where I'm going to be going. Now I need to change that to a smaller bit. So just give me a second here and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so I have a bit here that I'm pulling out. It's a 3 8 inch shank. Okay, so I'm going to put this in, which is a smaller bit, and that means it'll give me tighter corners. That's all. So, um, let me put this in there. I'm just tightening this up on the top. Okay. Alright, so what I'm going to do here now is line this up pretty much to where I want it to be. And, you, and what you don't want to do is you don't want to go further than the lines that I have there. So if I stayed sort of like right inside that black line, I would be in good shape there. Alright, so right about there is where I'm going to start. So what I'm going to do is, uh, this is a, a drill and a milling machine. So I'm just going to drill So I just drilled a hole in there. Now I've got to go that way a little bit so I'm going to come back with the drill a little. And you can do this a number of ways. You could just uh, you could start the drill and then just crank the handle to go right through it. But it has, because it's kind of thin because it's kind of thin metal it doesn't always work as nice going like this. But it does, you know, you can do the job. So it depends on how you want to do it. Sometimes I cut all four sides, sometimes I don't. It all depends on what's going on here. But that's how I get the hole started. hard to do this because um, I don't have anything to really hold this thing as tight as I could. See that the top of this moves back and forth a little bit. Here. Here. Getting it cut straight along that straight edge of where the lines are. I'll do the whole file those edges there. Okay, so let me just show you what I have here now. I 
it's not perfectly square but I can file that nice and square but you don't want to cut through the top there that's, that's the point you got to keep leave that top in place so basically what I do let me run and get the uh, key and we'll see how okay so now that I have the two holes in there and they're rough you can see that the key turns all the way around so all I got to do now is put a file in there and then I can file that off better. Um, one of these days I've got to come up with something better to hold this. Probably a piece of wood that would come the full width might be better rather than just putting it inside part way. I haven't tried that yet but um, it will probably work better. But anyway so I'm going to take this file and I'm going to file these edges square and smooth and then that'll be good as long as this can turn in there without any problem because it has to be able to lay against the top totally flat where are we here yeah so it has to lay against the top totally flat okay and it has to be against that front flat that's what makes it cut quarter inch and the three quarter inch cut or half inch cut I should say half and quarter inch so anyway um, there's not a lot to that and then I gotta weld the handle and stuff onto this but I'm not done with this I want to trim this off here you know turn the sides shape that up a little bit better so it looks nice and then I'll go from there and like I say it's it's not easy to always cut these the smaller narrower ones cut a little better because they're a little stronger they don't move so much that the bigger you make them the more they turn so I just need to file this off and then I'll be in good shape with that You know it's amazing outside I noticed that it's still dripping out there it's about 34 degrees but yet tonight it's supposed to get so cold I don't know how it's gonna happen but I guess something's moving slowly over here okay so I got those two square holes cut in there and filed down so now you can see how this turns all the way around in there and it has to be able to lay flat okay it lays flat in there for the quarter inch cut and then it turns up for the half inch cut now this is three quarters of an inch wide so that's how that works but I'm just saying that's how this thing does its uh, cutting so it's not really hard to do but it's, it's this was a little bit hard to come up with when I first started making them but it seems to work pretty good and you know all you do is put a handle on here and then you can just you know aim it outward and that would be the or cut that you're needing so yeah so straight up like that would be the wide side and then down is when you're cutting the narrow side on you know at the out on the outer edge of the cutter so it's a matter of turning it up and down so when the handles on there like say if that handles out here that means that when it's turned up like this so straight out with the handle means that that is um, cutting the wide side down is you're cutting the smaller side so that's how that'll work it's not it's not the hardest thing I've ever done on a milling machine but it's a little flimsy because of the size of it but you know going sideways is not how it works you know so that's why moving it sideways tends to make it um, you know buckle a little bit but anyway that's how you have to have that. It has to be able to lay completely flat in there or be able to turn up to that 90. So it has to be able to turn without any issues. So that's good. Do a little bit more planing on this and it'll be good. Now you don't need a milling machine to do this. I just did this on the milling machine. It, it makes it easier for me to hold by just drilling a bunch of holes all the way around it so it doesn't come out too bad that way um, the milling machine is capable of drilling a hole and cutting across here but the problem is is that this is so thin that it moves back and forth this way but that's not where the strength has to be the strength has to be this way on top of the pin and it is so I'm just going to take a file now and I have a file that's just about the right size and square that up in there and as long as the uh, the new key that I have spins in that I'll be good and then I'll do the opposite side now you can see the key fits in there good 
So all I have to do is just straighten out the edges. It's just a matter so you don't cut yourself or anything. Because actually, the key, the whole, the uh, the handle to the key and stuff, pretty much hides a lot of this. So it's not like it's a. Uh, you know in your way but I do want to get it cleaned off here so that it's the edges are nice and straight and that's how I'll go about doing it so that's not bad there a little bit more filing I'll do but you can see I've got it it's flat on the top there and then it'll be against on this side so I have to drill this one out here too like I say what I started doing was just just drilling holes along the edge seems to do a good job with it so you'll see how nice it looks once it's all done and painted but I'm just saying that this is I guess I had that down there too low um, I'm saying that once this is all sanded square filed square and it's painted and everything is done with it you'll see how nice it works I mean it really is it's not a hard thing to make it's just the I really have to think about what you're doing up here where you can make you mix yourself up pretty quickly all right, so I'm going to drill holes around this one and then file that square. See, I have that vise very tight on that, so you can see how it still wants to move this metal. taken aluminum and, sh and sheet metal that's different shapes and cut all kind of things in it so it's not that it's the mill that can't do it it can do it it's just that the way the metal is being held there it's not being held strong enough to um, actually hold it to make that nice square and uh, this cutter is uh, brand new I just took it out of the box to use it for the first time so it's not even the cutter not being square it's just a matter of the metal wants to vibrate and I can't um, I don't have something in there to hold it I, like I say I think something bigger than this box would work better but we'll see all right so anyway I need to file that square and it doesn't take much of points file down fairly quickly yeah okay now I'm not finished with this but I just want to show this to you um, on this side here if you look at this when I run my finger out there it's smooth okay but on this side when I run my finger out there I'm getting caught 
because this metal here from the top needs to be uh, trimmed down a little bit with the file. If it's not even out here, it may, makes this um, a lot bigger. It doesn't look like it, but you know, in the distance of the um, eight inches, it ends up sometimes making it a, as much as a quarter of an inch difference because of how it's throwing it up in the air. So what you want to do is make sure that the top here is filed flat with the inside. Okay, like this one is. I don't know if you can see that there, but this is flat in here. When I pull my finger out, I'm not catching on anything. But if you look on this side, I think you can see right there has to go down. So once I get that down there, and like I say, they, they cut off pretty easily with the file. So once I'm done filing this down and making it flat, trim out, you know, just uh, once I get this flat, I can dress this up inside here a little bit and then that'll be good. So that's basically how you get that square. Now, I'm pretty sure, let me just back up here a little bit. I, I'm pretty sure that this already fits. Yeah, so the key already spins around in there. But it's ha it has to lay flat at the top. That's one of the important parts of this. So let me file that down and then that'll be, uh, that part of this will be finished. So if you look across there, you can see that the back metal is touching the top all the way along there. That's what's what we want, okay? That's what's important. And then it turns that way. It doesn't matter if there's slack on the bottom, because when you're using it, it goes this direction. This falls down onto the top of that. That's all that is. It's either flat like that, or it's turned up. Okay, so let me just show you. Now, uh, these don't stand up because of the short side that's on one side, but I'm holding it. So, you turn it, like this would be to make the, the angle cut. You gotta make sure that this is in place. And it will be once they're together. So that's how you make the angle cut. And then the flat cut would be when you turn this with the arrow pointing down. So it'll be a handle on here that points out, you just pull, sort of pull it out and then turn it down and that'll cut the part on the bottom, or that'll cut the flat cut, that cuts the bevel cut. So there's not a lot to it, it's pretty easy to use. But it's, what's nice about it is you get a pretty much always the same cut. You're not, uh, unless you raise or lower the head too much, you know, you're going to always have the same type of a cut. And that's the good part of this. That's why I use it, as opposed to using a piece of wood or something else to try to work with. So anyway, the next thing we have to do here then is to get the um, we have to get the handles put on there and the washer that keeps it from falling through and weld the uh, clips on the back here that catch the uh, cant. And then we'll be able to finish grinding it down nice and uh, we'll be able to paint it. So probably, let's see, tomorrow is Friday. Probably Saturday I'll be finishing this thing, I guess. And I'll ship it out on Monday.